My husband gave me divorce papers. His part was already filled out. If there's anything you don't like, feel free to give this out, okay? He smiled, a smile that seemed to say he couldn't possibly be wrong. Years later, I never would have imagined that the man I married, Tatum, after an office romance, would one day make me want to slap that smile off his face. I'm Sally, a working wife, married for three years now. We don't have kids yet. Our marriage isn't great, but it's not terrible either. My husband isn't exactly controlling, but lately he's been lazy and doesn't contribute much. It's not unusual for both spouses to share chores, but my husband refuses to help out. He still insists that housework is women's work. Maybe it's because he lived with his parents for so long, but I think it's mostly because of his influence from his family, especially his mother. When you marry someone, the type of mother-in-law you end up with can really shape your married life. It's like a luck game, and whether you get lucky or not with your mother-in-law can make a big difference. My luck? Well, it's like getting the same disappointing prize every time. Sally, can't you make a decent meal? Another miss today, she would say. My meeting ran late and I got home late. So when I manage to leave on time, I do cook properly. What are you talking about? For a woman, taking care of the house is more important than work. It's common sense to have dinner ready when your husband gets home. I wish that kind of common sense had stayed in the 90s. Every day after work, my mother-in-law is somehow always there. My husband gave her a spare key without consulting me, so now she comes over every day. She's always there before I arrive, but I'm too afraid to ask how early she starts settling in. Then she spends her time finding faults around the house and bombards me with criticism and snide remarks as soon as I get home. Honestly, if Tatum keeps eating like this, it's going to ruin his health. That's why I cook when I can. Sigh, my poor son stuck with such a disappointing wife. It's frustrating. She just brushes off everything I say, like she's not even listening, and calling him my poor boy is just weird. If it happened occasionally, it might be bearable, but her coming over every single day like this is incredibly stressful. What's worse is how my husband just laughs it off and doesn't intervene. If she's going to come over every day, the least she could do was pitch in with something. But no, she's quick to criticize and make sarcastic remarks, yet she never lifts a finger to help. Sometimes she even takes portions of the dinner I've prepared. I'm so tired. Well, I'll just take this takeaway then. Hold on. If you take that, we won't have anything for dinner. That's why I keep telling you to come home earlier and cook. But today I couldn't stop making excuses. Just hurry up and cook for my dear son. I'm taking this. Oh, and I'll grab the strawberries from the fridge too. Bye now. Wait. You can't just take our dinner without asking. Even after our dinner was taken, my husband didn't say a word. I'm really getting annoyed, giving him an angry look, but he just keeps grinning foolishly. It's so frustrating. Why aren't you saying anything when our dinner was taken? It's no big deal, just a little bit. It's not just a little. They took the whole thing. Then hurry up, huh? I'm really hungry. Hurry up and make dinner, will you? I was left speechless with anger and disbelief as my husband went to the living room and flopped down on the sofa. Oh, this is so infuriating. At least pay for the takeout. I was seething with anger, screaming in my mind. I'm fed up with my mother-in-law showing up unannounced every day. But on the rare day she doesn't come, I feel uneasy. Why is that? When I got home from work, my mother-in-law was unusually absent. My husband, who should have been home before me, was also missing. Even though it should have been peaceful, 
I felt a sense of unease. The reason became clear the moment I opened the fridge. It was gone. The steak I had saved for a special occasion, bought on payday, was missing from the freezer where I had stored it. There was only one possible explanation. I hurried out of the house, jumped on my bike, and pedaled as fast as I could while still being cautious. My destination was my in-law's house, just a seven-minute bike ride away. Finally arriving there, breathless from covering the distance in five minutes, I wasted no time. I pushed open the unlocked front door of their house and called out, but got no response. Yet, I sent someone inside. Knowing my mother-in-law often enters our home unannounced, I went in without hesitation. What I saw inside was shocking. There it was, my steak, the package emptied and the remains lying on the table. Seeing it almost completely eaten, I couldn't help but scream. My in-laws and, strangely, my husband looked at me in surprise. Sally, what are you doing here? Why did you barge in like this, Sally? Ignoring their questions, I grabbed the tray that had held the steak and glared at them. This, this is the steak I bought. Right? Did you eat it without asking? Oh, that. It was delicious, thank you. My mother-in-law smiled cheerfully at me while my face burned with anger. It's not about whether it was delicious. I bought that to share with my husband, why did you eat it without asking? It's no big deal. Tatum had some too, but I didn't get to eat any. Hmm, serves you right for planning to eat it alone. Consider it a lesson for not buying enough for all of us. Learn from this. Why am I the one who has to learn alone? I looked at my husband, hoping for support, but he just grinned foolishly again. And you... Why didn't you stop them? Well, I did get to have some, so it's okay. If I didn't get more, there's no need to get so upset. We can just buy more. That's not the point. It's useless. Nothing I say seems to get through to my husband. Just then, tears started welling up in my eyes, and I felt a gentle hand on my shoulder. I looked up to see it was my father-in-law, always calm and quiet, I never understood what he was thinking, but I couldn't believe he joined in eating it. Or maybe he didn't know I had bought it. That's what I thought anyway. Sally, next time get a bigger piece of meat so we can all enjoy it properly. My mother-in-law commented casually. That's not the issue here at all. Do they have no sense of apology? Their selfish actions drain me so much that I couldn't even find the energy to respond. I'm leaving. Don't you dare come barging in here again. My mother-in-law's voice rang out as I turned to leave. My husband stayed behind, mindlessly drinking beer. At that moment, I felt utterly indifferent. A few days later, I realized I needed to have a serious talk with my husband. The conversation took a surprising turn. What? I blurted out involuntarily. While I was out working, I unexpectedly saw my husband. Seeing him wasn't unusual. He's in sales, after all. However, it was strange because he had told me he was on a business trip in another state. Why? What's going on? To make matters worse, he was walking arm in arm with a woman I didn't know. Judging by his foolish grin, it was clear they had more than just a casual relationship. I instinctively hid and listened as they approached, overhearing their conversation. Tatum, why are you looking at me like that? She asked. Because you're so cute, he replied in a pathetic, lovesick tone. Their conversation continued. Do you really want to marry me? She questioned. Yes. I want to marry you as soon as possible, he assured her. Then will you get a divorce? Of course. I'll talk to her about it tonight. Decision made, he affirmed. It was confirmed. He was cheating. In that moment, I felt no shock at all. Instead, I realized 
I had fallen completely out of love with him. There was no love left for him in my heart. It was all gone. I'm done, I thought, feeling indifferent. I knew what I had to do. First, I needed to find a moving company. After discovering my husband's affair, I promptly moved out. Three months later, I was busy moving once again. The movers delivered my belongings, but I had to unpack everything myself. The full service option was too costly. As I opened the first box, the doorbell rang. As expected, there they were, my husband and the two of them without a word. I unlocked the door and let them in. They rang the bell again upon reaching my door, so I silently opened it. Immediately, they entered. Hey, Sally, long time no see, my husband greeted me. Wow, this place is really nice, remarked my father-in-law. Sally, what were you thinking, running away and buying a condo without telling us? My mother-in-law exclaimed. Yes, I had finally fulfilled my dream of buying a condo. The apartment I shared with my husband was old and worn out, and I had always hoped to move somewhere better. When I found a newly built condo that matched my dreams, I didn't hesitate to make the purchase. So when I informed my husband, he showed up uninvited with my in-laws in tow. It was exactly what I had anticipated. The three of them barged in without hesitation, but I quickly stood in front of them to block their path. Stop right there. Only residents are allowed beyond this point. What, Sally? What's gotten into you? That's harsh. They're my parents. My husband looks shocked. Sorry, Tatum, but your parents are strangers to me. Sally, how can you say that? Isn't family more important than anything? Other things matter more than that. What a bad wife. Tatum, you should leave her. Relax, Mom. But yeah, divorce might be an option. I'll ask for this condo as part of it. It's kind of small, though, isn't it? Ignoring me, my husband and his family looked around the inside of the condo near the entrance. It would have been better if you got a two-family house, Sally. You really don't think about others. Exactly. She's completely thoughtless, don't you think? Yeah, I wanted my own room, too. But that's tough with this place, isn't it? They kept talking, not noticing my disapproving look. Well, if we divorce, we can figure something out right? Just as my mother-in-law reached for the doorknob leading to the living room, I gently pushed her hand away. It didn't hurt, but she looked at me shocked. Sally, how could you push my hand away like that? What's gotten into you? I'm just asking you to respect our privacy and not enter without permission. You're still strangers to me, I calmly explained, unafraid of her anger. My mother-in-law stared at me, wide-eyed. That's it. I've had enough. Fine. If that's how you feel, then we'll really become strangers. Tatum, divorce her immediately. My husband smirked oddly at his mother's sudden outburst, but I quickly spoke before he could respond. Don't worry. There's no need for that, I assured them. My husband looked bewildered. I... Don't know what you're misunderstanding, but I'm already single. What? How could you do that without telling me? My husband exclaimed in surprise. My mother-in-law joined in. Did you really do that? You can't just do whatever you want? Yeah, that's right. Filing for divorce without my consent is invalid. I'll take this to mediation. My father-in-law added, supporting my mother-in-law, but I had expected this. Oh, well, but Tatum was the one who prepared the divorce papers. Huh? What are you talking about? I have no idea. Oh, so you didn't prepare it? Remember when we first got married, you said, if there's something you don't like, feel free to bring it up without hesitation. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it. And that's when you finally remembered, right? My husband yelled, looking distressed. 
I never thought I'd actually need it, but I'm glad I kept it since there was something I didn't like. Why did you handle it yourself? Who does that? Seriously, it's not valid. Mediation, no divorce. Well, fine. Let's settle this thoroughly before we talk about divorce, okay? It seemed like everything had been anticipated. I pulled out documents and photos from a large envelope I had placed by the entrance. Inside were photos of my husband with his mistress and evidence of his affair. What's this? Evidence of your affair, I replied calmly. My husband stammered. Did I? Well, you were the one who left home, so... No, the affair started long before that. I've heard a lot from this woman, your mistress, and I even have these photos. Huh? Is that true? After leaving home, I quickly consulted with a lawyer and hired a detective. They discovered that my husband and his mistress were meeting almost daily, making it relatively easy to gather evidence of their affair. With my lawyer beside me, I confronted the mistress. Tatum told me he's divorcing you and marrying me. I'm so happy he's finally leaving you. That dreamy girl gave me lots of photos of the good time she spent with you. No, that's not true. I expected a fierce battle with the mistress, but surprisingly, the conversation went smoothly due to her naivety. Tatum will take care of my compensation and handle the paperwork, so make sure it's done. Did he? Wait, I didn't agree to any of this. Well... I did ask her to wait quietly until the divorce is finalized. No wonder she kept avoiding me whenever I tried to contact her. I understand the story has taken a new direction, and your explanation won't excuse your actions anymore. You're admitting you reached out to her first. That speaks volumes. Tatum, wait, listen. It's not what you think. It's not what it seems. There's no point in arguing. You have the right to contest the divorce papers, but the divorce will happen eventually. I'll also be seeking compensation and a fair division of assets. That's how it stands. Caught off guard by these unexpected developments, my husband collapsed to the floor, or rather, my ex-husband now. Considering how useless he's been as a husband, I don't expect much in terms of savings, compensation, or property division, but honestly, I'm not counting on any of that anyway. My main goal is to divorce him and break away from both him and my in-laws. That's all I hope to achieve. I have a job and income, so I'll manage. I still have savings after buying the condo. I'm not worried about my future. If I can just stand up for myself against my husband, that's enough for me. With these thoughts in mind, I looked down at my stunned husband. However, it was my mother-in-law who couldn't hold back. Wait a minute, Sally. What are you talking about? Your son cheated without our knowledge, didn't he? Well, even though our son cheated, it must have been your fault too, right? It's the wife's fault for getting cheated on. Oh, is that so? Well then, could you please leave now? This is exactly what I expected. I didn't think we'd have a reasonable conversation anyway. No matter what she says, she's just a stranger now, completely unknown to me. I decisively began to usher her out, but my mother-in-law resisted strongly against my efforts. Even if you're getting divorced, you need to hand over this condo for the property division. Why should I do that? We bought this with marital funds, right? Our son has a share, too. They probably don't understand the whole situation, my mother-in-law said with a smug look. Well, if we had bought this condo with savings from our marriage, then that would be true. But unfortunately for her, that's not the case. I purchased this condo with money I had before we got married, so it's not marital property to divide. Really? Yes, that's right. Both my parents passed away shortly after I started working. That's why I had planned to care for my in-laws after marriage. 
but facing my mother-in-law's constant attacks and snide remarks every day shattered that resolve completely. Tatum never contributed financially to the household. Looking back now, was he spending it on his affair? Well, it doesn't matter. I've been covering almost all our living expenses, so there are no savings from our marriage. But compensation is different. Even if it's paid in installments, please ensure your son pays it promptly. I can't believe this, Sally. Can't you reconsider the divorce? I'll talk sternly to my son about it. Why should I? There's no benefit for me in that. But I promise to stop criticizing from now on. Well, it's too late for that now. But how about this? Let's have steak tonight. We'll treat ourselves to some high-quality meat. Do you have money for that? Um, well, do you have it? If you lend it to me, I'll go buy it. No way. There's no benefit for me. With a deep sigh, I calmly addressed the three pale-faced individuals. Please leave. Wait a moment. Let's talk. Please leave. Leave. Just buy the meat and go, I shouted with determination. In that instant, they all jumped up and hurriedly left. Ah, that's a relief. Afterward, my ex-husband accepted the divorce without further resistance mentioning a lump sum compensation payment. If he didn't agree, he seemed to realize the seriousness of the situation. His mistress was furious upon learning he wouldn't cover her share of the compensation. Well, my ex-husband felt comfortable because I was covering our living expenses, but his salary wasn't high to begin with. In fact, it was even lower than mine. Someone like him couldn't afford to pay compensation even to his mistress. Even so, since she signed the documents, I'll make sure to collect the compensation I'm owed firmly and promptly. I was worried my ex might return, knowing the condo's location, but thankfully that concern was unnecessary. It seems she aged rapidly and lost energy due to the shock. My son, struggling on a pension, came back home in tears because he couldn't afford rent either. Surrounded by two unreliable men, my ex-father-in-law and ex-husband, and struggling in a tough financial situation, it seems my ex-mother-in-law doesn't have the energy to come to my house. I heard this from my ex-husband, who pleaded with me to wait for the compensation payment. Now that I've started fresh as a single person, I'm enjoying carefree days of independence at home. There's no one making snide remarks and no one eating my groceries without permission. I'm really enjoying living alone. Maybe I'll try some local specialties next time. Freedom is truly nice, I whispered to myself. Oh, it feels so good. Freedom, I exclaimed. It feels great. Should I open another beer? I laughed at the thought reveling in the newfound peace and tranquility. Life finally was on my terms, and I intended to savor every moment of it.